When we talk about gender, we refer to either a male or a female. And we know that for many centuries, men have stood strong, taking the initiative, doing things for the friends, for the family, for communities. But always, for a man to succeed, it has been understood and agreed that a strong and supportive woman oftentimes had to be at his side. While the man remains the head in many homes, the woman is always the neck. That strong, unrelenting, focused, and determined support system. No one argues that. So it's a wonder today now where we talk about increase in gender-based violence. It is true that some men, a little number, have been abused. But generally, when we speak of violence and talk about gender, we often remain, re refer to the female folk. The world comprises over 8 billion people of that number. A percentage of 49.25 are female. One in four women in her lifetime may be abused physically, mentally, socially, and emotionally. We say here in Nigeria, we say here in Week and Dill, that negativity can be brought to an end. And we start here with you. Come on board with us today on Weekend Hill as we talk about gender-based violence. Nigeria is our location. You are a support system today as you interact with us on the program. My name is Thelma Obaza and Patience, the beautiful Patience, mm -hmm. is here. Thank you, the delectable Thelma, mm -hmm. looking amazing. You too. Okay, like you said, gender-based violence actually violates a whole lot of human rights. And um, women, children, and girls are the major victims of this gender-based violence. And there are so many practices that give rise to this practice, this ugly trend from virginity testing, widowhood practices, um, property appropriation, first marriage. I can go on and on. And trust me, it gets even nastier. That's why, as a nation, we must stop to say no, shine the light, and speak up against this very ugly trend. And that's what we're doing today on Weekend Deal. Yes, we want you to join us. Let's stop this very ugly trend. My name is Patience Eloi Abba, and I am delighted you've joined us on today's show. Please, we would love, see I'm smiling, we would love to hear from you. <music> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it is Weekend Deal, and today our focus is on gender-based violence. Do you know that gender-based violence is divided into four major categories? Physical violence, sexual violence, psychological violence, and economic violence. Now, for our background, uh, Ujo has uh, will break this down further, and he's giving us a real-life uh, situation. Let's watch, and then we can talk. <laughs> Statistics has it that one out of every three females have been through either physical, sexual, and or intimate partner violence or non-partner violence in their lifetime. Does this bother anyone? Yes, it does bother weak and deal. And so, a look at gender violence becomes pertinent. Eta, to Kabusa village, gave a hint on the reality of what gender violence looks like. My husband came back from village after COVID-19 with another woman. I'm surprised I welcomed her. Before I know it, after one week, she and that woman started between me. What are you doing? What is my husband? I have to give him my blood. What is it? I have to connect him. What happened? We have people beating me. He say, you know what make me and stay with them for this for this house again. I say this house where I followed you. 
He said it can't happen. You don't need me for this house again. Some of my property, when I want to use it, the so-called wife started dragging the property. Say the husband done that. Shut Is it your land? She cannot get any Dad, property. Daddy, do you know? Do you know what she even did? What? She... Now those clothes that you removed, that hey? time in the box. Hey? She went and she was still packing the clothes. She packed the clothes. Packing the clothes. Oh. Me trying to collect my property from that girl. Let her use him. Use the property to do something. The, the, the lady started fighting me. When he fighting me, my husband come back with joint hand. Two of them pushed me out of the out of the house. My mommy was confused. In the process of dragging this um, this thing, she wants to rain to the people. The woman started beating my mom. Can you believe that my daddy came back, saw that thing? What happened? Joined hand and continued to beat my mommy on top. My mommy couldn't bear it and ran out of the house. When people came in, people were begging my daddy to receive her. My daddy said no, he's tired of the marriage. Okay, settle the woman, let her go. He said that nothing is going to settle her with, that she doesn't have anything. He gave her petty petty clothes, sat back to leave the house with. We don't even know that the Ghana must go, he gave us. He has removed some of our clothes and pushed the rags to us. Gave us marks. The things my mommy do rent, that she do get money for, in order to fund us. He seized everything and said he had given it to the new wife. And the old new wife held it tightly. That has been how I've been living since three years now. We have been managing my document. He even sees my document that since my mommy is my, my mommy is con we continue dragging that land with him. He will not re uh, uh, like he will not release my document. And I should come and go to school. Let him see that it's over his dead body. I will gain admission. Don't beg me anymore. Pack your load and go and meet your mother. That university of yours, I'll tell you to succeed in that life. I will tell you to succeed. I'll tell you. That is how the suffering fool my body with a uh, shot. I don't know. That is how um, my younger ones say I should not worry. If, as far as I'm the owner of this uh, house, I should manage. The man throw away this mat for me and these children that we continue using this mat. He sees all the phones, all my properties. I thought that something from family will settle. You know great family to settle. You know great reverend father to settle the matter. You know great anybody to put them out. It does they drag my land property. The land property that I have. Globally, as many as 38% of females murdered, research says, are linked to their intimate partners, while about 6% of women have experienced assault by their sexual partners. It is weakened deal and we deal decisively with gender violence. Indeed, we need to deal decisively with gender violence. You are in the right place to get more information and to share your experiences where a team of experts in different spheres will prefer solutions. We're going to Ibadan. They talk about poverty being a major cause of uh, gender violence, but we'll go there to know more. I, I said you took the money. money. I didn't take your money. Look at the way you are even attacking me. I'm sorry. Do you want to beat me? What uh, what has done error? Yes, now. Darling. Wait for me. Darling. Wait for me. Ah. Wait for me. Gender violence has become a reoccurring decimal in our society. It is surprising that it is seen as a way of life and a way of correcting women in certain quarters. As a matter of fact, many women have battered, beaten or even subjected to violence by their husbands, and some die in the process. Um, roots of gender violence can be traced to the um, slavery, era of slavery. Then the women and men were captured and kept enslaved. The men that had um, stronger power could not even defend the women. That was the exception of um, sexual violence most of the women were raped, so, and since then, there's been a social norm 
to I think majority of um, the society that um, it is normal to violate women and to get away with it. A victim of gender violence is a 42 years old woman who would not like to appear on camera. She says, I experience is beyond her imagination and it is even better to leave this world than to continue to tolerate the excesses of the man who even brags about wife battering openly. There are questions begging for answers. What could be the causes of gender violence? Poverty in the society causes violence, whether against women, whether against children, whether against men, any persons. So poverty is one of the major reasons, major causes of violence. Is a law capable of arresting this ugly trend in the society? We have laws. In fact, we have many laws in Nigeria. But unfortunately, the, those laws are like toothless dog. The, the execution of such laws is the major problem. Even the women that we are even talking about, they are not even ready to come out and say, I've been assaulted, I've been violated. Most of the women do not come out to personally stand up for their rights because of the societal stigma, most especially about the sexual violence. And you know, stigma in a society sometimes is a trauma for some women. And I need, and, and I think there's a, a need to, to encourage and sensitize women to, to get themselves together and know their rights and speak out so that they can get um, defense. Fear of the unknown has compounded the problem as many women in this kind of situation continue to die in silence. A lot of things should be done about gender inequality. There's so much about gender inequality, the, the, the norm and the impression that people have that, uh, people have that um, women are, are not to be reckoned with and are to be treated anyhow. These words could prompt any family from denying a woman her inheritance. It will shock you that if you even if a woman go to the police station and report that my husband assaulted me, that ah, is a family matter, go back home. They will say that. So those people that are supposed to uphold this law, that are supposed to make sure these laws are being used to what it's supposed to be used, they are they culturally their mindsets has been set to the fact that, I oh, know it's a family matter. It's a family matter. Go back on that and say to you. Indeed, governments, law enforcement agencies, and stakeholders must come up with practical solutions that will put an end to gender violence in Nigeria. If it cannot be eradicated, it can be drastically reduced to save our women and female children from untimely death, depression, and miserable life. Okay, thank you so much um, for joining us. We'll take another future that will add to our Jones. story. Okay, Joyce. Okay, so I, I used to wonder children have this cherubic innocence that make them so sweet and adorable. And I used to wonder how someone will target the child for violence. I've never understood it. I can never understand it. But Joyce will lead this conversation. Let's watch. Children are the bedrock of the society. They bring so much hope and joy to the family. However, research has shown that these leaders of tomorrow face a lot of societal challenges, one of which is gender violence. Gender violence is a sad situation that should never happen to a child. And uh, when it happens, it does affect children psychologically, emotionally, and um, it makes growing up difficult for them. Uh, it's a very sad situation any child will find uh, themselves and grow with. We have a classic example that took place this year where a stepmother um, took a stepchild's hand and burnt it till it was totally malformed because I think she said, I don't know what she said he picked. Physical verbal, domestic, and sexual violence on children has a lot of consequences, most especially when those tasked with protecting these children end up violating them. 
Please, I need you to help me take care of my baby. Just There's no problem. I'll, I'll be back. I will stay long. Okay, Please. ma. Okay, ma. How was school today? Fine. You have started your exams? Yes. Come on, sit down close to me. I'm your uncle. I don't see that. No, don't worry. I'm, I'm your uncle. Don't worry. Not your uncle. No, don't Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm your uncle. You hear? My mother always tell me that I am in charge of my body. He will touch my body. I will tell my mommy. Don't worry. I'm your uncle. Not your mommy! Oh, my goodness. Uh... People that are supposed to be protecting children, violating them, it's, um, it's a huge one that we have uh, found in our society. And that's why children should be taught early about something so that they can speak up and speak out at any point in time. There was a situation where an IDP child was taken away from the the place where violence was taking place and put in a home here in Jos to be taken care of by that family. The guardian of that home chose to punish the child by placing her into making her sit down in boiling hot water. The infection from the burns ended up costing her her life. I'm a survival of gender violence in children. I remember when I was five years old as a young girl. So on this fateful day, um, this big uncle, he was coming and a pool of children were playing in the compound. And immediately I saw him. As a good girl, I ran and I collected what he was carrying, took it to his room. My mom wasn't there. So he detained me and started molesting me. As a young girl, nobody has told me anything. If you see anybody doing this to you, this, is, this should be your reaction. This should be what you should do. So he did that um, for quite a time. And um, because my mom thought we were all playing. So all of a sudden, she started looking for me. So I guess one of them told her that I helped this uncle to carry his things. Then immediately, she stormed into the uncle's room and... Um, <laughs> to the shock of her life, she noticed that I was being molested. And I remember that my mom gave the hot slap. And you know, as a family, we never got to sit down and talk about that. Because a lot of, you know, young people, after being molested, violated, they go into adulthood carrying that hurt, carrying unforgiveness. And a lot of them probably end up being pedophiles. The high rate of gender violence on children led to the implementation of the child rights law in 2005, in which several actions has been taken for the effectiveness of the law when they are called into action. The first thing we do is to apprehend the perpetrator, be it a biological parent guiding from a school, anywhere the case is coming from. So we also cancel parents part of what we do, if need be, depending on the extent of the violence perpetrated against the child, we usually charge to court through the legal department in our state headquarters here. We're going to talk about the law that is protective on the issues of children, especially on the plateau is the child's rights law, which has been domesticated from the Child's Rights Act at the federal level. So the child's rights law on the plateau also gave provision for the establishment of the family court. And the family court is a child-friendly setting that will accommodate all the challenges of children and equally protect their rights. And it also involves the participation of their parents and guidance and also other relevant stakeholders that will help in enhancing the rights of these children and also protecting their rights and also rehabilitating them. Children are humans to be discovered and molded. Therefore, addressing harmful gender norms and ensuring that each child is protected and has the opportunity to grow up healthy, educated and safe will go a long way to have a better society. We've talked on this program about uh, children having rights. When we talked about child abandonment, and they do have rights. It's um, challenging to fathom what will possess 
or infiltrate the mind of a grown-up adult to lead him to want to abuse a child who is below five, below ten, who is not even fully formed. What kind of attraction is that? He needs some help. And I do hope that they are getting the help they need. Because sometimes, even when the fruit of the law is brought upon yeah. these people, the mental challenge they have is not uh, yeah, cancelled. Yeah, okay, um, we'll need to meet our guest now. Barista Emmanuel Oche is a human rights activist and Abuja-based lawyer. Good morning. Welcome. Good to have you on Thank you. Thank you so much. Mrs. Free Akim De Bulos is a director, of gender affairs with the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. Great good. to have you on Weekend Deal. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good morning. Okay, good morning. So, yeah. um, Barrister Che Emmanuel. Yes. I mean, we've been watching all these short videos, and everybody has been saying the law, the law, the law. How strong is this law? Does it have a bite? Because if it does, why is this thing? This thing continues to be a recurring decimal. Is that a, is the law toothless? Just the, explain about the law. Well, uh, thank you and good morning again. Um, the law is not toothless. The law is strong. It's powerful. It's potent, and it is always there for those who have been violated to seek redress. First of all, violence against gender gender-based violence. It's something that the legal jurisprudence in Nigeria have taken very seriously. And in keeping with this seriousness, they have come out with what we now refer to as the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act 2015. Okay. Uh, before the VAB Act, we'll call it technically VAB, VAB Act. Act. Yeah. Okay. So before this act, we had the criminal code, particularly section 383, that prescribed punishment for violence that result in grievous harm mm -hmm. just three years punishment but the law has taken it beyond grievous harm grievous harm because if you fight if you if there's a violence against person and there's no grievous harm mm. the law will turn the eyes somehow against uh, away, from, away it. from it but the verb act now protects those who are victim those who have been stalked those who have uh, the genital, uh, female genital uh, mutilation, um, forced marriage, uh, forced sterilization, forced abortion. Um, I mean, have it, the damn rape. The and list all of is this yes, yes, yes. So now you do not need to have bodily body harm before the law takes its course on you. Is it because things are supposed to be our uh, secrecy? The church tells you, the, our religious bodies tell you. Keep your, don't bring a third party into your matter. Keep everything secret, secret. Could it be the reason why women are not crying out when they are being beaten? Uh, people are not coming out to talk about things happening in their homes. I don't know if this contributes because I don't understand the secrecy. And a whole lot is unreported, like you rightly noted. Yeah. Could it be? Yeah, thank you very much. Like you rightly pointed out, there are factors that influence people coming out to speak. You know, we have cultural factors. We have religious factors, just like you rightly said. And the fact that there's that need to protect family name. You know, things happen like this in a family and the family would rather conceal it in order to protect the family name. But with sustained advocacy and awareness creation, things are changing and changing very fast. Okay. Because what the ministry is presently doing is to engage in advocacy and awareness creation. And it is no longer business as usual. Yes. Paris now, Chip is coming here. Um, the cases are underreported, we know, because of stigma. Some people are already, st the self-stigma, societal stigma mm -hmm. is happening. But in, ish in instances where cases go to court, there are times when the accused gets discharged mm -hmm. because of lack of evidence. How can that even happen? We have 486 uh, cases of convicted perpetrators with the alarming figures that we have mm -hmm. in Nigeria. How is that possible? Well, Where is the loophole that these people are escaping through? Mm. And how can we cover it solidly so that they face the full wrath of the, the law, law for what they are doing or have done? Well, I, and is medical <laughs> counsel needed in case some of them are mental? Where, who is going the extra mile to give them help that they need? Well, uh, let me take you from the aspect of evidence. Mm. In our criminal jurisprudence, evidence is the end of all argument. Mm. And so if you have been violated 
and you are unable to prove your case beyond reasonable doubt, you may not be able to get ju uh, justice. No, please explain uh, beyond all reasonable uh, doubts. Uh, uh, don't, don't worry about this. I know, no, 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 I'm serious. Explain beyond all reasonable doubts. Okay. Let, let's all, me and other Nigerians uh, Okay, let, let's, let's, let's take a case in point. Okay. For instance, if you are accusing someone of rape, uh, you have to prove that it was forceful penetration. You have to prove that in the course of penetration, there was resistance. And in the course of resistance, your part, uh, maybe your private uh, wears, mm. your panties, your clothes, your brows, whatever, were torn. I mean, there could be bodily injuries to show. And then, I mean, beyond every evidence that you can show to the court that this person indecently and forcefully attacked penetrated, you. attacked you and penetrated. But if you go to the court and allege that you were raped and you're unable to prove, show this evidence, the court is blind. The court is blind. Until your evidence now, is presented. Now, well, now, when you go to court, the, the, the complainant and the defendant, they know the truth. It is only the judge that is on trial. Mm -hmm. So the judge may not really tell what happened until you are able to advance your evidence logically. Mm -hmm. Not just advancing it, but advancing it logically. Because you may bring your evidence and you dump it there. Dump it there. Mm. Uh, the court is not for the Christmas. So they will not go picking the evidence and putting it in place for you. So you need a lawyer who will be able to advance it. So let's say <laughs> so a woman so was raped <laughs> 10 years ago, and I decide that, okay, it's time for me to speak up, and I want to that person prosecuted. It was 10 years ago, but it's, I'm, I'm, I think I, I have what it takes. I'm strong mm -hmm. enough. Is there a statute of limitation sure. in, yes, in our yes, country? Yes, yes, yes. For criminal, for criminal, you can come up at any time and do. But you should, even if that is the situation, for instance, you should have your evidence lined up. If you don't have your evidence, you may not get a torn dress from 10 years not, ago. Of course. So, the the so, bruises so, will so, have healed. So, so there, there's something we call lack of acquiescence. So if you, if at that point, you were unable to bring up this matter, mm -hmm. um, you may have slept on your right. And if you slept on your right... <laughs> sorry, sorry, um, <laughs> sorry, Bryce now, Chair. You know, yes, right please. now, there's... Um, a very popular lady who has been on trial in the United Kingdom. Yes. Mm. And um, there was a very popular man as well, yes. who, a, a yes. billionaire. Yes. The country did not look at his worth no. or his wealth no. or how many years have no. elapsed. When women spoke from I a traumatic out. point of view, yeah. everyone came on board and took it up. To the point the man committed suicide in prison mm. and the lady is going to face some interesting amount of years for covering up. Um, Sometimes, what I'm asking now, is there a group of people, lawyers themselves, who are trained to get justice for people who have faced um, violence, not just gender-based, gender violence of any kind? Of course, because yeah. there must be some special training to get them the justice that they need. This is not something we can just push aside. People are going through trauma. They are fatal cases. You know, What are we going to do about it? That loophole, we say, this is it. Together, let us lock it tight. And if we are determined we can, tell us how that can happen. Well, it is practicable, and it is even happening. There are a lot of lawyers, who are, including myself, who have engaged in this kind of litigation pro bono. Uh, when I mean pro bono, I mean free. free, 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 free yeah. so that's it. Now, uh, the MBA too have uh, a, 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 a group of lawyers that intervene in such situations. Mm -hmm. The Legal Aid Council, there are lawyers there uh, who offer free legal services for this kind of uh, violent based um, uh, act. But the question is, how are the police? I'm glad you have one of your persons, mm. uh, one of your discussants here who is a police uh, officer. Mm -hmm. The question now is, how are the police attending to this kind of report? For some people, for some victims, they don't even go care to go report the matter because if they go to report the matter, they become, the, the hunter becomes the hunted. Yes. Mm. And then eventually, they are asked to bring money for investigation. They are asked to bring money for X, Y, Z. And some of these people are relatively um, poor. They are unable to cater for themselves in other need, let alone spending money um, seeking justice. And so in the course of doing that, some of them give up. And then investigation is not carried through to the end. Uh, for us as lawyers, we, we have a group of lawyers who are, whose primary responsibility is to ensure that where issues like this are mentioned in court, we go there to intervene. Hawa is reaching us from Zamfara. Okay. She says, how can a woman who's been abused mentally and psychologically seek redress? 
because sometimes it may not be physical. physical. Yeah. And she says, um, she goes on to say, what if, what if someone who has been assaulted has no money to hire a lawyer? Mm. How do I go about seeking justice? Okay. She also sent one earlier. She talked about, um, she said, many women are not getting justice in the courts. They're mm. not getting justice in the society as well. I think she's referring to stigma. Yes. Let me take one more before Barrister Oche would lend his voice to this. Muji Taba Abba is from Kaduna. He says, I think the punishment and consequence should be more severe and it should be made public. The people should be known, perpetrators should be known to everyone. Mm -hmm. I know abroad they have. Um, this, uh, yeah, they your have face a, will be yes. there and they will say Anywhere this person is a pedophile. Yeah, yes, the pedophile, for pedophile, example. Yes, it's a list. Very style, cheap, yeah. Yeah. Many <laughs> messages coming, but please address this. Uh, uh, okay, first so of all, let, let me uh, speak a little to what. Um, uh, Mother Kundi also uh, said earlier, um, um, advocacy from um, civil society mm. is helping the judiciary a lot. Mm. In fact, uh, their advocacy is seriously gaining traction mm. as far as our, cont our contribution from the legal society is concerned. One, um, female now have equal rights like any other man anywhere in the country. We, there are retinue and panoply of judgment decisions from okay. the APS court that have confirmed this. For instance, we talk about Madukolo versus Madukolo and Kendilin versus Kendilin. Hmm. You now have, I mean, female now have right to own properties. Great. The father, they now have right to assess anything, just like men. Of course, we're hmm. talking about equality. Mm -hmm. And the court has given very, very corrosive judgments in this regard. So uh, it's a function of advocacy. And if it is sustained, some of the things we see elsewhere, we're also going to see it here. Okay. Um, for um, our viewer there, mm. one, if you have been psychologically violated, mm -hmm. Um, of course, it is not a thing that you want to prove that this is what has happened to me psychologically. But there is a text, a human rights text. Mm. Uh, I think in the police um, mm. divisions mm. also. Mm. The police are also coming up with time. That's yeah. why I'm talking about advocacy. Mm. There's a human rights text. Uh, approach the human rights text. Put your complaint before them. They will do their investigation. Sometimes these psychological violations you talk about will have physical um, evidence as well. Uh, one, maybe you have not been properly fed. You have been, I mean, insult here and there. Mm -hmm. And then the woman is traumatized all of the time. Um, the police will do their investigation and charge the matter to court. As I said earlier, the lawyers are approach any lawyer approach any lawyer okay. and put your complaint before them. Okay, okay, okay. I'm okay, sure, okay, I'm sure you'll okay. get judgment. You'll get uh, support <laughs> okay. from uh, any lawyer. You are saying there's no lacuna anywhere. That it is, everything <laughs> that, is tight, that like Thomas said. Lacuna. We need to wrap up this conversation now to invite our next set of guests. Barrett, I will share your final words. Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for us at um, a level in the, in the judicial sector, we hope that uh, those who have been violated should approach any lawyer to seek redress. Uh, the government on her part should also step up their programs, women policy, to enable them get access to justice. Mrs. Freya Bulos, please. Uh, Gender-based violence is everybody's business. Mm. And um, who knows who will be the next? Please, when you see something, say something. something. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, mm. Mrs. Freya. Kim De Bulos, Director of Gender Affairs, Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. Thank you, Barrister Oche, Thank human you. rights activist and Abuja-based legal practitioner. Well, Nollywood is unrelenting also on this issue, mm. and they've put something together for us. Let's watch it and perhaps learn. And the behind the car. Who parked this car here? Who parked this car? Come on, come on, come on, come on, this car. If I could even go home and come to explain, I'm sorry. Come, my own woman said, Sashi. Now, she got that in my front. Come on, get this car. Oh, my days. And I am so proud about my journey as a woman. I said, I'm working at the age of 15, and I've achieved a lot. At that time, I finished on NYSC and I was just driving one bongo car. Having been one in a violent relationship, I've dedicated my life to making sure that the culture of silence is no longer perpetrated. Like the title of the movie, Death in Silence, the culture of silence perpetrates this 
how do I say, pandemic, it emboldens the perpetrator and shames the uh, survivor. They're not victims, not in my eyes. The survivors. Particularly because I was raised by a single mom, a strong woman. And if you follow my work, I celebrate women all the time. Women are my protagonists. I showcase their struggle, but I showcase their win. I celebrate their win for having those boss. I remember my father was um, a very violent man. Very violent. And she didn't leave until he took, he threw her things out. I was just about three years old. It was raining and she threw us out. And she said, I'm never coming back. So the time he kept on begging her to come back, she never did. And I'm so proud of her. So if I get an opportunity to be able to make a difference, however little it is, even if it is by playing this little role, even if it is one episode of a limited series, that to get somebody somewhere to remember that there are people somewhere, there are children somewhere, or there's a woman somewhere that has been enslaved, whose husband died and she's been forced to drink the water that he was paid, his dead body was paid, just to show that she does have a hand in his death. So I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to travel this journey with you in reaching out to these people. I hope it's going to make the desired impact. Take these people to court and jail them. And this is an issue of, uh, oh, not enough evidence. For how long? Evidence is not there. But because of the kind of laws and the way we treat criminal matters, they will say, oh, you did not prove your case beyond this level that. What's that? What is, see, somebody is dying. The children are testifying. The boss has testified. The woman is also saying, I was treated this way. And then in a court, somebody is a woman who has blood in his or her veil. He said, oh, there's not enough evidence. I know of someone very close to me that her husband was beating her to the extent that when I asked her if she's ready to leave the marriage, when she leave the marriage, I become the victim wherever he said down to the, he always called my name that I separate him with his wife with five kids. But I know she's much happier. They say she has a tumor sometime ago whenever she goes to the hospital. But now she needed an um, operation. But now I keep teasing her, where's your tumor? And the tumor is nowhere to be found. So it wasn't tumor, it was trauma. Yes. So, um, I think we should use our voice, our position, and then where we can reach out. I and mean, then when we talk about gender violence, it's not only women. I've seen boys being raped. I, I still go back to my Almadri and out of school discussion. I have seen it live. I have treated a lot of them. It is important that all hands are on deck working assiduously together to get the results that we desire, which is to completely eradicate gender violence at all levels. Thank you, Nollywood, for lending your voice to this very important discourse. And it's time to go to Ekiti State. What's the legal angle? What's the stance? How much success are they recording in bringing the full wrath of the law on uh, defendants and accused? <laughs> Inequality and violence in human relations are two atrocities circumventing social harmony and peaceful coexistence. When these exist at intergender level, then it becomes more delicate and worrisome. Gender violence is wickedness that needs to be properly addressed and even stamped out. However, how has the nation's laws been addressing this very ugly scenario? The law relating to gender violence, as you know that before the advent of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law, gender-based violence in the private was not a criminal offence, especially gender-based violence between spouses. But since the coming into being of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Law 2015. It prohibits all gender-based violence in its entirety. That's whether violence happening 
in in the private sphere or in the public sphere. When legal frameworks are put in place to tackle the issue of gender violence, it is pertinent to ensure enforcement. More often than not, Nigeria and the states of the Federation have several laws to address varying issues, but implementation and enforcement mechanism call for more attention. The problem with the implementation of gender-based violent laws in Nigeria uh, snowball from the victims themselves. For example, if a young lady is raped, either by relation, by a neighbor, or by some other persons, because of this societal stigmatization, that female and the family may not want to come out to ensure prosecution of the suspects. So in that circumstance, the law is not always having its full effect. Regarding equity, a state known for its unwavering stance against gender violence, various initiatives have been put in place to curb the incidence and impact of gender violence. Beyond um, just criminalizing, when you do this, this is the penalty, when you do this. The equity law also institutionalized a robust framework. For example, the equity law make provision for gender-based violence management committee. This committee is a very robust committee that encompasses all the relevant actors that respond to gender-based violence, including line ministry, security agencies, NGO. Going forward, it is imperative that more efforts still need to be made and further measures put in place to decisively tame gender violence and give succor, especially to the women folk. Uh, in any kind of family, gender violence are involved or exists, it should be crying out for help, like you should not be quiet for any kind of thing that is happening in such family. It should not be quiet, maybe to husband or to wife, she should not be quiet, she should cry out for help. Well, I think one thing we should also do when it comes to reporting, because a lot of times women go to police stations, whether civil defense, all these um, security agencies, and they report up till now. Some of them will say it's a civil matter. Go back to your home, go and resolve with your husband. And at the end of this day, these women will get killed because they don't have anywhere else to turn to. So one thing we can do again is maybe training for security people. You have to have gender lens to be able to handle these GBV matters. When a woman comes to you, she has been battered by the husband, and then you now tell her to go back home. Or maybe a woman was raped. You say, what were you doing there? What were you wearing? From a practical perspective, all hands should be on deck to stem the tide of gender violence as the government alone cannot squarely combat the menace without the support of all and sundry. Indeed, government needs our support, unrelenting support and commitment, that is. And it's uh, time to introduce our next set of guests, Inifom Etuk, the founder of She Forum Africa. She's here. Great to have you on Weekend Deal in Ip for Ini, so I can say Ini. Yeah. You will lend your voice to our discussion. Thank you for coming. We also welcome Chief Superintendent of Police, FCT Command. She's the Gender Desk Officer in Abuja. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning. Great to have you. Wow. 
when we see someone in uniform, usually <laughs> we're filled with trepidation, <laughs> but today we're filled with confidence because we know that we are bringing major, major issues to this discussion and tell us how much success you have recorded. Ini, let's yes. start this discourse with you. And so you are giving voice to many who are unable to speak for themselves. Tell us, in terms of this gender violence, how has your forum been able to give uh, them a voice? Thank you very much. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning to everyone who's watching us from wherever you're watching from. Um, I'm happy to be here, and I really do commend the NTA for prioritizing this conversation. It is part of the very robust advocacy that we put for, uh, forward at SHU Forum Africa. And um, interestingly, advocacy is the core tool of our engagement, advocacy to women, advocacy to institutions, to um, policy formations, so that we can arrive at the sort of decisions that are solution-oriented in nature. Regarding GBV, um, gender-based violence, as you know, I mean, I've listened to all the conversations ongoing. This is part of um, the 16 Days of Activism, which is a global mechanism for advancing um, convers conversations and awareness on ending gender-based violence. And uh, today is uh, day 15. Uh, for those who have been following the conversations, the International Day to End Violence Against Women and Girls uh, begins on November 25. That mm. is the global commemoration. And it goes all the way to end on December 10, which will be tomorrow. And December 10 is International Human Rights Day. Now, what is, the, what is the significance? It's not even a coincidence. Mm. It's deliberate, okay. which shows that um, gender-based violence is one of the most pervasive and prevalent forms of human rights violations. So that is why the advocacy period, uh, by way of awareness, stretches from the international commemoration on November 25 all the Up way till to December human 10. rights. But where are day. we? Where are we? Tell me about real life experiences and the success you are recording because we know many of those people are traumatized I, when I, it happens. I, I, I cannot really, you know, I, I will be shooting myself in the foot to really talk about success. Um, but l let's start from what is the status of human rights in Nigeria? Interestingly, this year marks the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. And in Nigeria, can we really beat ourselves on the chest to say, yes, we are fully um, on point when it comes to upholding and preserving human rights of citizens? Why is this the beginning of this conversation for me? I'm talking with Rhoda Jatao in mind. Uh, mm. You are in the media, and I'm sure you followed the previous conversation that you had. Um, I, 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 I heard that. when, yes, they were talking about religious okay, intolerance. Um, Rhoda... Um, we will remember the case of Deborah, who was lynched by her schoolmates um, in, in, in Sokoto. Um, and she was linked to death. What did she do? She said, you cannot share um, religious messaging on my school platform. And that is how that happened. But religious mm. intolerance says, why should you even voice that out? And her schoolmates descended and she was lynched. All of us saw it happen right here in this country. Mm. Did the judicial process kick in? Did mm. the justice system avenge for the death of Deborah above religious intolerance? That is a rhetorical question. Mm. I'm not here to answer it because no. it's still on the table. Now, Rhoda condemned the lynching of Deborah. Oh, Deborah. Rhoda is now in detention for condemning the lynching of Deborah. So when we really want to talk about human mm. rights, first of all, globally, you know, in an umbrella form in Nigeria, we really have to go back to where our value system resides when it comes to the basic formal and informal uh, principles of upholding human rights, human rights in Nigeria. Right now, we're prioritizing conversations that are solution-oriented in nature. We are no longer going down the route of mm. storytelling for the sake of storytelling just mm. to win a lot of who's and ours. You mean that really happened? No, we've gone past that if we're really looking at solutions. What does data say? One in three women have encountered some form of um, um, physical foul violence, gender-based violence in all its ramifications. Mm. That's scary. That is really scary. Come back to this person whose message you just read. Ideally, this person should have the confidence to walk into the nearest police station 
Ideally. that is in her vicinity, wherever she is sending this message from. But what is the place of trust between the citizens and the security infrastructure that should be there at the beck and call of citizens? And I'm not saying this to target um, CSP, but Just because speak. this is a priority concern on the table. Now, um, sexual uh, assault referral centers have been inaugurated in practically most of the state. Mm. But how do we raise the advocacy to the point where these centers are functional, citizens know about them through a robust information and awareness creation machinery, mm. which is something that you are doing by raising this awareness, um, tabling this type of conversations. How do we embolden citizens? Uh, Barista Emmanuel, in your previous conversation, was talking about we need people to come forward to report so that the security system can kick in to do its part. The legal system can also kick in lawyers who are working pro bono. But how do we inspire that trust? That trust in them. That allows people. Because at the end of the day, we, that we need prosecutions. Indeed. But without people Indeed. coming forward, we, we can't get anything done. And we don't just want prosecutions. We want convictions. Interesting. Without the naming and shaming. Because these linkages are so important. So I don't far, want us to be having conversations you said 15. in isolation. Um, yes. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Bulu said 486 in three years have been convicted. Yes. But in a year, maybe that's nationwide, which is small. It is a tiny, it's a it doesn't tiny even qualify fraction. as a tiny Okay, fraction. but let, uh, let CSP answer to what you have just said. She said, um, uh, talking about the confidence of the victims and their families. Before she answers, mm. let me chip this in, mm. because where people really have a resentment with stepping forward, especially to the police, is because our police infrastructure deploy what we call morality policing. Mm to address gender-based um, violence issues. What do I mean by morality mm. pollution? The issues of why were you wearing this clothes to go to the market or to wherever the person was going to when mm. this um, assault happened? Why were you, did you tell your mother, did you, that is not the job of the police. It's like you are further victimizing are for the victim. Yes, whereas okay. we should be enabling the process to spotlight Indeed. the perpetrator. Indeed, CSP, hmm, the ball is in your court. Thank you so much. Inni has struck. <laughs> <laughs> in, in kindness and friendship <laughs> in kindness and friendship and building solidarity and enabling human rights how can Nigerians. we remove morality policy okay. i from disagree how? with you okay, mm. okay. yes i Tell disagree us. with you because um police of yesterday is not police of today i think i can stand here firmly to tell you that we follow the international mm. standard now mm. because we've passed through many training. As I'm seated here, I passed through training outside the country and within the country. Okay. And when you talk about FCT gender dex officer, I think there are many people that, that have had contact with my office. I'm talking about the gender dex office. Mm. And I'm not only talking as by the command, I'm equally talking up as per the divisions, because in all the divisions in FCT, and I can equally say in Nigeria now, we have gender dex officers that are specially trained. And there's a training we call train the trainer. Mm. As we are trained, we train the people that are working with us. Mm. And we equally train those that are not working with us. Like those people that are the counter. I don't believe in FCT that there is a station that you will go that is they, they, they report a sparse battery mm. and they will call it family matter. Mm. No more. Mm. Because we have a lot of um, policies that we use. We have a VAP Act yep. that talks a lot about family matters. Talks about sparse battery is an offense. Mm. Talk about eviction, unlawful eviction, it's an offense. But let me be realistic. A case that is not reported cannot be investigated. Okay. It is when they come up with complaint, mm. then police will be able to do the needful. And the needful is to investigate, to see whether an offense has been committed, and to ensure prosecution and to gain conviction. Mm. Okay. But when we are talking about spousal battery, most time, when those women come with complaint, the moment you start the case, the case, 
Let me start with one that happened of recent. Mm. The one that happened of recent, she came forward, she reported a case, a case of battery, with evidence to show that she was battered by the husband. Yeah. We, we started the case. In fact, the husband was detained. Mm. We reported everything, we did, we did everything, we did 24 hours to ensure that this case gets the needful in the court. Uh -huh. You will not believe what happened. Tell us, please. When the case was taken to court, we called the prosecutor. We want this case to be handled immediately. The case was taken to court. You will not believe it that the woman got to the court and said, no, police, I love my husband. My husband has been taking care of me. Mm. Then the judge looked at the IPO, looked at the prosecutor, said, what are you people saying? Are you trying to start a family? Mm. When the report came back, I was sad. Mm. No, matter how a good, no matter how good a case okay. that is reported, mm. if the complainant is not ready to follow the case, mm. You cannot gain confidence. There'll be a challenge. Let okay. Me, let, me, let me chip in. Let me just take one message in it, just a minute. Mm, okay. um, Austin Nanzing Nimpa is reaching us from Joss. He says, gender violence is a serious violation of people's rights, especially children and women. He says, women and girls often start with the best <laughs> intentions for themselves and their families, but halfway through the process. People tackle them. They bring up societal norms. They bring up societal issues. They bring up family and the progress and development. And sometimes these women back down. Oftentimes, they don't even have the financial capacity to continue with uh, that case. Mm. Well, we'd love to hear from you both. I, I, I want to just touch on the issue of stigma because that is what is attributed to that type of scenario that you see. And it happens every time, even with the most robust um, legal support. So we have to consciously address issues of social stigma, religious stigma, all kinds of other cultural stigma that does that further de 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 uh, decreases the ability of the woman to thrive, to step forward and seek help. Okay. So that is what is responsible to that. And we are calling on everyone. If you see something, say something. Understand that the security system is there to protect you. The agenda desk, like Madame will, will say in her closing comment, I imagine, within the civil society structure, mm. we also have the International Federation of Women Lawyers. They do a lot of pro bono work. If you go on FEDA website, they will provide all the links in the mm. different states. The sexual assault and uh, referral centers are there in almost every state right now. It's one thing to domesticate the VAP Act is another thing to enable its robust implementation. Amazing. Because without that robust implementation, which needs to be supported by budgeting and financing, Indeed. we cannot begin to nip the issue solution-wise in, in, in the, the board. board. So that is our priority. This Indeed. year's team is unite to invest to end. So invest means put your money where your mouth is. We too should profess support wherever yeah. we can. Help yeah. the women, help the girls, speak up, take them through and ensure that they yes. seek justice at all times. God bless Nigeria. Good we are always stronger and better together. 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 Bye. Together. Together. <laughs>